yeah, you know, it's it's what we want to be as a club is to be be challenging for championships. And um, you know, in the last four years, this is our our third crack at a grand final. And um, you know, sustained success is is difficult. And um, you know, tonight it looked pretty difficult when we're down 17 early on. And you know, credit to to the Phoenix and and the coaching staff of South East Melbourne, Simon and his boys, you know, when you get into these kind of series, you just, it's hard to run a set play because uh, especially with no crowd, everybody hears what the set play is before, everybody knows it. And so um, I thought we loosened up a little bit offensively and just kind of stayed with good spacing and good screening and, and made good reads. And that, and that was pretty difficult to scout. But Jock in that second quarter when we were down heavy, um, he kept us alive. You know, he got us shot the three ball amazingly, um, finished some tough ones, late shot clock, um, you know, kept us in it. And um, then I think we found a rhythm defensively in the second half. And there was a there was a little Will Weaver in me tonight to say we've got a coverage um, that we think can work against Sykes and it didn't look great early on and but we stuck with it and um, you know made him shoot some tougher contested long layups in the in the second half and um, fortunately our on-ball defense was better I thought Sammy Mack um, you know really led that for us in the second half really got us going and I think we might have kept Sykes scoreless or something in, in the second half and um, and we did a great job on their perimeter guys you know all series and um, you know, yeah, really pleasing the way we defended in, the, in that second half to hold them to 29. Doc, for you, obviously a big night here tonight. I'm just wondering what the last couple of days looked like for you in terms of trying to bounce back from that performance. And then uh, additionally, I spoke to you before about whether you're working inside, outside, as Dean pointed out, it felt like you hit those big threes early and the longer the game went, you were able to work inside and, and really dominate down low. Um, yeah, I think... For me personally, the, the the last two days since since that you know that loss have been tough. I've just like there was you know 24, 48 hours there that I was just boiling in my room. Like you know you get those those feelings of rage where you're just like, damn, why did that? Why is, did that work out like it did? So uh, you know Chris Barlow, all the all the fellas were just on my case. Like you let it go, let it go. Like you know rah rah. rah so. My whole mentality tonight was like, obviously still got to play some tough D and, and you know, Yanni's a tough cover because he's so strong and he knows how to use his body so well that all I, all I had to make sure was that, um, you know, I stayed out on the floor because I looked at the last game and I was like, damn, I only played 12 minutes, but I was plus 14. And I'm not a massive believer in, in plus minus because there's a lot of different factors that play into it. But just having that ment mentality of like, I think I think the guys, you know, need me out there. And Dino was telling me, you know, we need you out there for at least, you know, 26, 27 minutes a night. So my mentality in this game was just to come in, let, let things play out the way they did and, um, you know, not force anything because I think forcing shots in finals is what hurts you and, and uh, you know, just try and stay on the floor as much as I could and that's, you know, the guys helped me through that. They helped me just keep keep level-headed and honestly, I was, I haven't been nervous for many games this year. I was nervous coming into tonight because I was just like some, some stuff is out of my control and making sure that I did the stuff that was, you know, to a high level that was in my control was just kind of where my head was at and, and you know, that, that's it. Dean, I, I imagine you tried to push this out of your mind before this game, but now you're into the grand final. Obviously, the first two games are in Perth. Well, what was that process like? I, I think they mentioned that they spoke to you guys, they consulted with both teams, and that this was going to be the process. But how did that play out? Yeah, well, there wasn't there wasn't too many options that worked. You know, to try and maybe play. Um, a, a grand final game one in Sydney, you know, without fans, it just didn't seem to have that much sense to it. So, um, you know, to go over there where we've, we've, you know, we won two in the regular season, so we, we feel good about going over there and playing on that court um, to get two games there and then have a defined moment that we're going home. You know, and, and that's, we haven't had that, you know, for, what have we been away? 24 days, eight games, four states. You know, this has been the, the longest NBA road trip uh, ever right now. So, um, you know, it's been crazy, but we, you know, we just 
we've been good on the road. You know, we've um, what have we won? Six out of eight games, lost a double overtime game, lost a, you know a semi final game in, the, in these eight games on the road. So, you know, we feel like we've we've found a, a pretty good rhythm, and we don't really care where we play. We just want to go play and compete, and you know, play the basketball that we know we can play. Jock, I'll ask you quickly. I mean, I know prior to the last couple of games of the the regular season, you were speaking about the importance of, of top spot and getting those those home games. You'll still get the three games, hopefully, if you're able to get back down this way. But uh, are you able to spin this into a positive in terms of even though you're going to have to go on the road straight away? Um. Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, you know, the, the positive comes that we knock out those first two road road games in one hit. There's less travel. Uh, it's easier on our bodies. And then, you know, we, we finish this series, whether or not we win zero, one or two games in, in Perth, we finish it, you know, back home with our loved ones. Um, you know that's that's important for our for our mentals, and I think that that's like a lot of guys. And now you know, I, I know I am. Like I miss my family, I miss my girlfriend, and you know I want to go back and see him. And I think that it, there's an advantage in in having those last three games in Melbourne. So, but the advantage comes that we don't. You know, we we're not distracted. You know, going home, coming back, going home. You know, we can stay focused in as as a, as a group on the road in Perth. You know, we have freedom of movement out there now and, and I think that, you know, just knowing that there's there's a light at the end of the tunnel and we get to go home soon will provide us with a good boost of energy going into those two games in Perth. Roy Wood. Uh, Dean, just to follow on, on on the stuff about the, the grand final series, so have you guys been told you'll get to come home and play in Melbourne even if it's no fans or even if you only got a handful of people in the stadium? Yeah, that's our indication right now to say we've got two there, we're coming back to Melbourne. Um, I'm sure there's options of regional or city, or but right now we believe that we're coming back to John Kane Arena to play um, and we hope that at some... And, you know, we hope that I think AFL have gone to 50% crowds or something like that, so hopefully um, that all sorts itself out and we, and we have, you know, an amazing crowd for, for the grand final. And on, on tonight, on tonight with the way the guys knuckled down after that bad start, what kept you calm early? Because it didn't seem like you or the guys got too sort of angry or frustrated or whatever when things were really going against you. Yeah, it was you know it wasn't like the other night where I, I got upset at refereeing. It was you know I thought they did a great job tonight. The you know it was the foul count twelve to seventeen. I thought they they it was it was playoff basketball. You know there was really good competition, good physicality about the game. It was much you know pretty game to, for me to be able to watch. But they were playing a lot prettier than us early on. But I just thought they were playing great. You know, I, I thought um, you know we were solid. We weren't we weren't at a stupid high level defensively, but we were pretty solid, but they were just playing great and making tough shots. I think they made four um, in the first half that were really late shot clock possessions. Obviously the end of the quarter with Sykes making that massive one. And so they were just rolling. And so, you know, that's hard to sustain. And I thought if we just, you know, really going from game two to game three, it was all about us just being us and doing uh, better what we set out to do. Um, and we really didn't make that many adjustments other than just doing things better. So I felt comfortable with the, the group that we all were on the same page about how we were going to get back in it. And uh, Dean, you mentioned before about the Will Weaver style defense or doing a few different things for Sykes. Perth are going to be so different to what you've seen without Cotton. Have you got something set up for Mooney, or you got some sort of uh, <laughs> box and box and one, or some sort of deal to the best? Yeah, I'll, I'll pick an Al Westover or uh, another coach who's, who done, did some great things, but. Um, no, look, it's, you know, that was an on-ball defensive game. They, they probably have the most amount of reps of any team with a 1-5, one 1-4 one on-ball in the middle of the floor, and, and we, you had to be great in that coverage. Um, going to Perth, you know, it's so much more about off-ball screens and, and Blanchfield and, um, you know, obviously the post-up for Mooney, Steindl, all these guys flying off screens. And I thought, you know, this series again, the times that we chased, I'm not sure if Glidden scored the whole series, um, Chase broke off. We, we did a really good job with their perimeter guys and so we take good confidence from that to move to the next series that we can we, we can certainly you know stay attached to those guys Tommy oh sorry go ahead Roy no that's all good let Tommy have it thanks uh, Job question for you um, you know when you're down big like that in the second quarter 
how important is it to have guys like Chris Barlow, even like a Dave Anderson who've been in big game moments like this before to kind of keep the group level-headed and focused in terms of just, you know, working your way back into the game? Yeah, I mean, you said it. Uh, like, having having leaders like Mitch, Barlow, maybe not so much Chris, who are just, like, level-headed and <laughs> don't get too high or too, too low, they they match up nicely with guys like myself and Chris who are who are crazy and just get you know screaming and being ridiculous so having those guys that are just you know when we come in and there's maybe some frustration boiling over Barlow and Mitch like relax let's figure this out like it's fantastic but tonight like I don't think there was a point where we were we were frustrated with each other and you know people were yelling do this better do that better the whole time it was just felt like the ship was steady and we were just like we were missing shots and you know sometimes that's going to happen there's no there's no one's at fault for that so just having that kind of calm mentality the whole game where it felt like we weren't we weren't up and about really until the end I think that was a massive benefit and you know that's a credit to everyone Scotty's the same um, you know Joe's the same Sam Max the same Shilly's the same they're all just calm cool and collected dudes and tonight that rubbed off on, rubbed off on the rest of us and, and helped steady the ship and make sure that we didn't get too low there um, what kind of impact has Dave Anderson had on this locker room since he's been with you guys oh, I'll speak briefly but I'll let Jock speak as well um, you know amazing just to see the professionalism every day and everybody sees it um, you know we brought him here as, as certainly a bit of an insurance policy um, but to have you know his calmness about big games and predicting and you know what can happen and and just keeping a real level head and then you know, certainly when we go on to film, he hasn't been with us, obviously, you know, for a lot of the year. And then he just sees things a little differently as, and adds um, value, adds to, to the whole group. So, you know, from a coaching staff, it's a it's a great one just to throw a question at him in film and, and let him um, explore an area to ha- how we get better at that. And I think on top of that, uh, he does such a great job of pulling guys out of their own space. You know, like he's always talking about, you know, I mean, the man goes and sits in a coffee shop for like 10 hours a day, to be honest, but <laughs> it's it's always like, hey, boys, let's go do this, let's go do that. And we hadn't really, we ha- hadn't had that. Like, we connected and, you know, hung out, and I know dudes game together and stuff in the hotel, but but DA has had a real effect in just, like, pulling guys out of, the, out of their bedrooms, going out for a coffee, going out for a meal. Like, we've been going down to the beach every morning. Like, he's fantastic for that, so... Having that guy who really just like brings every piece of the puzzle together is massive, and I feel like I've really seen a difference just in terms of how well we get along as a team since he got here. Uh, and then on top of that, you know, uh, as Dino said, like he just does such a great job at dealing with his own body, and he's always, you know, looking to improve. I mean, the man might play until he's 45, so you never know. But like he's he he shows you how to do that, and that's something I picked up. Like you know. Going into that game too, I didn't lift the day before, and then he was like, "Hey, let's go lift. Like it'll probably be good for you. It'll help with your body." And and you know, the, it's those little things you don't really notice it huge, but it's like he's always working in the shadows. Nice. And last one, and drop for you again. You, you've been pretty high and confident on this group the whole season, heading into this series with Perth, the team you know you can beat. You've beaten them over there before. You know, what's the feeling amongst you and the group around around you know winning that championship now? It's going to be tough. I mean, as much belief as I have, and it's it's not arrogance. It's just trying to provide like a winning mentality, like I I did. I've tried to do from the get go. But the pressure is on us right now, and we need it. We, we want that. I think we need that, and we need to understand that. You know, this is our season to win. Um, we we need to bring it every single night throughout these games because it's not going to be a cakewalk over there in Perth. They're going to make our lives hell. They milk the crap out of their offense and defense every single game. And, you know, you see it even more so when they only have to focus on one team in a series. So going into that series, we need to understand that, you know, it's not going to be easy. Even though they've got some pieces out, they've got pieces injured, it's going to be a dogfight and we need to be ready for that. 